another thing you would learn looking at uh, not just Breed's text, but also uh, the articles he wrote for Spine Magazine in the early 80s, is that you can literally loosen the nervous tissue by simply changing a joint position. It is the hip. It's the hip. Briggs spends 20 years trying to figure out which movements of which joints have a, ma a major effect on the general tautness in the nervous tissue. And he discovers that it's the hip. It's the hip. It's the hip. It's not the shoulder, it's not the head and neck. <clears throat> it's not the foot. It's the hip, it's the hip, it's the hip. And he demonstrated over and over again and has, has done several papers on this, that adduction, adduction and internal rotation of the hip pulls the nervous tissue tautly. Abduction and external rotation, which are conjunct rotation, always go together. You got loosened. Taut, loose, taut, loose, bad, good, bad, good. Now I'm doing this because it's like it's, but cultural, countercultural, and uh, time and again you see people with persistent discomfort. And they're standing at attention. Why do they bring you to attention in the service, Jason? Because you can pay attention. No. <laughs> and we can do that and standing in a field by yourself. So, you do this to privates all the time. Or it's a punishment. It's always a punishment. It's always a punishment. They make you stand at attention in order to make you weak and vulnerable. Think about it. If you're under physical attack, would you choose that position? It would be the last position you would choose. You'd never choose that position if you were under attack. So the person who's not at attention is immediately more powerful because of the position you're in. Can you breathe normally when you're in attention? No. The contraction of the psoas in order to keep your hips adducted immediately diminishes the diaphragmic excursion. I can't breathe diaphragmatically nearly so well here as I can here. The excursion is immediately at them. Where the choir wears robes. <laughs> you get that? They wear robes because they're going to have to breathe. You're going to breathe like a singer. You're going to have to breathe like Pavarotti. It will not make you look like Pavarotti. We know why he looked that way. It wasn't because of the way he. Did. The, that made him sound a certain way. You've got to get your feet apart. Breathe diaphragmatically. You can't get. You can't breathe diaphragmatically without. It's right there. It's right there. So the patient can be shown again and again, that we can mess with your nervous tissue a little bit, reproduce all kinds of symptoms. You could have taken this lady yesterday, probably, and seen that her leg, her involved leg was in adduction and internal rotation, you look at the patient while they're supine, which, let's say it was your lady's left leg. Very good chance, 85% of the time, you're going to see this kind of picture. She lies supine, this leg's in a good position, and this leg's here. You see what's going on? The patient can see it. The patient's are immediately up. They, they can see right away, oh my gosh, look at that. Now, is this affecting the joints? Not nearly so much as it's affecting the nervous tissue, just like the hammer lock. What's the path from internal rotation adduction to abduction? What's the path? That's one that the patient must choose. You want to get the patient ending up here, and now you know why. But you can't just take their legs and rip them apart. Don't do that. That's not a good idea. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> But I walked into a lot of rooms and with a lot of patients who were in trouble. And you never see somebody with chronic discomfort lying in bed like this. You don't see it. That's the way I lie down. My feet go here. Because that's where gravity would take them just like it takes my head to the pillow. You see them here. And they're perpetuating the neural tautness in the system. They're decreasing the diaphragmatic excursion. They're doing this 24-7 and they don't know they're doing it. That's pretty good. Right off the bat, you can help them. Right off the bat, you can talk about leg position. Yes. Can I just clarify some things? Are you are you saying that in general we're aiming towards lengthening the nervous tissue versus shortening it? Yeah, it's a really good question because there's some confusion here. When the nervous tissue is mobile, you're in good shape. Mobility in the nervous tissue implies not only that it can glide within you, but that it can unfold. Lack of mobility in the nervous tissue might imply that it's been pulled tautly. It might also be folded, but not mobile because it is stuck for some reason. It's not moving freely. But we're not talking about a linear structure. We're not talking about a Euclidean-ly shaped structure. We're talking about a fractal structure. When I open my hand, the vast array of nervous tissue within here not only lengthens, some of it also shortens, you see? 
because it is so complex geometrically a shape, different from other structures in the body. Connective tissue, for instance, is Euclidean in shape. That is to say, you, you bend a bone, you know exactly what's going to happen. You approach it, you know exactly what's going to happen. How much, what kind of car broke this guy's leg? Watch Law and Order. Well, it was a car that weighed so and so, and it was going at a certain speed. That's what we can tell by looking at the fracture. You can't tell what happened to the nervous tissue in here. See? So you want mobility in the nervous tissue. You want its ability to move freely, present. It's a very useful thing to say. There's ischemia within the nervous tissue in this position. We know that because if they accelerate that position, they end up feeling worse. The point is, you don't necessarily have to choreograph the patient's movement from trouble. They'll take themselves out of trouble. But you have to create a context that allows them to do that. So I come to John, and I create an environment that allows him to move out of his own trouble. And this turning to the left that John can feel clear through his pelvis, appreciate that, John? Mm -hmm. Is his idiomotoric activity. I didn't create it, and I don't produce it. It's already present. And John, being the way he is, is allowing it to continue. Aren't I right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Kareem, you went right back to where you should be. And when I asked you to create it again, you mimicked it. You see what I mean? Healthy response. You see what I mean? Less driven by the culture to hold himself still, more so. And we all get to be the way we are in various ways. Yes? 